Hello everyone and welcome to another live edition of K-Sports Sunday for September 13, 2009. I'm Connor Pertain. Well, are you ready for some football? We may have to wait until tomorrow night to see the Patriots, but there was plenty of football to sink our teeth into today. But today, we begin with some baseball. The Boston Red Sox took the field not once, but twice today in a day-night doubleheader against the Tampa Bay Rays. In Game 1, Clay Buchholz battled with Matt Garza in a duel that featured two pitchers on the top of their game and a slew of hitters that were still sleepy from last night's rain delays. Buchholz gave seven strong innings, giving up only five hits and one earned run. Garza matched him going into the eighth with one earned run and six hits until a pinch hit double from David Ortiz set up the stage for defending MVP Dustin Pedroia. Let's go to the highlights. Joey Gathright, the runner on third, pinch running for David Ortiz. Pedroia looking for a sack fly, but he gets even more than that. Hitting the ball over Gabe Gross' head and in over the wall for a two-run home run here in the bottom of the eighth to give the Red Sox a 3-1 to one lead. Matt Garza disappointed, Dustin Pedroia pumped up as can be, and John Madden can be disappointed over that pitch. Jonathan Papelbon coming on to close out the ninth, strikes out Gabe Gross and strikes out the side. The Red Sox win by a final score of 3-1. to one. Currently in the nightcap, the Red Sox lead the Rays 3 to nothing through 6. The biggest news heading into the Week 1 games this morning was that former backup Patriots quarterback and current $60 million Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Matt Castle would sit out his Kansas City debut with a knee injury. Castle's replacement, Brody Croyle, was respectable, but couldn't keep up with Joe Flacco and the Ravens as Baltimore soared to a 38-24 win. And in the biggest news of the day, if you watch ESPN, was the debut of Brett Favre in purple. But the notorious gunslinger met, spent the majority of the day handing the ball off. I mean, you can't blame him when he was, has Adrian Peterson lining up behind him. Favre had an okay day, 14 for 21 for 100 yards and a touchdown, but his best stat was that he allowed AP to go off for 180 yards and three touchdowns, leading the way for a 34-20 win of Eric Mangini and the Cleveland Browns. Former Pats assistant Josh McDaniels also had his coaching debut today, winning 12-7 in the final seconds when new quarterback Kyle Orton connected with Brandon Stokely on an 87-yard touchdown pass. Elsewhere across the league, Matt Ryan and the Falcons took down the Miami Dolphins 19-7, the new-look New York Jets rolled over the Texans 24-7, and Peyton Manning and the Colts squeaked by the Jaguars 14-12. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about. In a moment, I'll throw it over to Jake on the back talk set. But first, why don't we shy away from taking a stand here at YSA Sports? That's why each of the guys got on camera and recorded their Super Bowl predictions before the season began. Let's roll the tape and you can see how we did. I am Nick Hitty here for YSA Sports, here with the Super Bowl predictions. I have the Eagles and Chargers playing in Super Bowl. Uh, in the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl. But I have the Pats coming out of the AFC, and I have the Philadelphia Eagles coming out of the NFC. I have the Eagles beating the Vikings in the NFC, and in the AFC title game, I have the Ravens trumping their division rival Pittsburgh Steelers. I have the Cincinnati Bengals and the Minnesota Vikings. I know that surprises all of you, but I think with Favre in the Minnesota Vikings offense will really help, and having him as a quarterback will make them a better team overall. And I think the Patriots slightly have the edge over the Panthers in a high-scoring affair. And this isn't a Super Bowl prediction. It's what's going to happen. I'm Alec V. Litor for YSA Sports. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sunday edition of YSA Backtalk from our Natick Studios. I'm Jake Saltzman. Joining me today, we have Chris and we have Alex Freegood in studio uh, talking about the NFL scores from the day rolling in uh, from the late games. Uh, starting off today, Atlanta and Miami. Atlanta wins this game 19-7. Uh, Matt Ryan, another good performance, picking up where he left off last year. Guys, I'm going to toss it over to you. Do you think Matt Ryan, uh, a second-year quarterback now, can avoid the sophomore slump and uh, prove that the Atlanta Falcons are for real in the, uh, the very good NFC South? I think he easily could. I mean, he's not, he's not your typical quarterback where you look at <clears throat> and think that he's, gonna, he's that one-hit wonder, you know, that flash-in-the-pan guy where – Oh, he, that was just, that was luck. He has nothing to, I mean, you look at it, and he, he had some weapons with Michael Turner, Roddy White, all those right. guys. But it wasn't the explosive, you know, that blew you away offense. Mm -hmm. And now with the addition of Tony Gonzalez at right. tight end. Tony Gonzalez had a touchdown catch today. Yeah, I mean, that's just, 
probably the best tight end maybe in his in the history of the NFL. Absolutely. Getting a weapon like that, that's no small task. So Matt Ryan couldn't right. prove himself. And, and imagine how pleased Tony Gonzalez is to finally be going to a contender now. He's uh spent his entire career in Kansas City and especially the last couple of years, Kansas City has been in the dumps in a very bad division, one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, another second year quarterback, Joe Flacco and the uh the Baltimore Ravens, a very impressive performance today. They um they defeated the who did they play today? They defeated the Kansas City Chiefs. Sorry about that. Uh, Tony Gonzalez's old team, 38-24. Joe Flacco, uh, over 300 yards, three touchdown passes. Uh, Matt Castle hurt. Brody Croyle did start the game. He played okay. Uh, I'm going to toss it over to you, Alex. Larry Johnson in this game, 11 rush, 20 yards. Can Larry Johnson get himself out of the you know out of the Todd Haley's doghouse and perform for the Kansas City Chiefs this year? Um, he's not what I would really focus on in that game. What I would focus on is the change of the Ravens. I mean, they were a really strong offensive team, and they really struggled on defense. I mean, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs. Larry Johnson, big point. He struggled, which is which means they pretty much had no run game in throwing that game. And Matt Castle was out, so you have a second string, and at one point their third string quarterback came in, and they were able to put 24 points up against the Baltimore Ravens, right. one of the strongest right, right, right. defensive teams. You know there's something either wrong with the Ravens' defense or Kansas City Chiefs might have a great offense this year. Uh, Chris? I mean, that's a great point. I, I didn't even think of that at first, but now that he put, points it out, I mean, you have the Kansas City Chiefs with a with their backup quarterback. Now Matt Castle in there, Brody Croyle, who, you know, he, he did okay in Alabama. Everybody thought he was he was all right. Maybe he'd be a decent backup quarterback. Right. So when you have a backup quarterback going against one of the best defenses in the league, everybody thought, you know, top five defense in the Ravens like they always are. They just blow out. I, go out. I mean, you have your games on defense, but I think it is surprising, especially opening day, against a team like the Chiefs, who's probably going to be in the cellar of the division. Right. Chiefs are much improved, but it doesn't look like a uh, doesn't look like a, a promising year for the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, uh, I would figure they would be in the cellar of the uh, of the AFC West. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings in Brett Favre's debut. They go into Cleveland Browns, a hostile environment. Brett Favre didn't pass the ball all that much, but why would he have to? when Adrian Peterson is your running back. Three touchdown runs for Adrian Peterson today. We all know he's the real deal. What do we expect from Adrian this year? Well, first off, uh, Brett Favre only played ha a little l more than half the game, so obviously he didn't throw the ball as much because he didn't have as much playing time, and they brought in Tavares Jackson, which was good news for the Vikings, allowing their veteran quarterback to rest a little bit and not to throw as many balls. But 21 passes for two, two and a... A quarter of a quarter, a uh, hard thing to say right there, um, is a decent number of passes. And then you got Adrian per Peterson, who had three touchdowns and that am and about 180 yards on the day, and that amazing run where he broke three, two or three tackles and ran about 60 yards into the end zone. That play was amazing. And something else that people don't talk about a whole lot, the Kansas City, uh, excuse me, the Minnesota Vikings have one of the best complimentary running backs in the league in uh, Chester Taylor. Chester Taylor has done a great job uh, not filling in as a starting running back, but also backing up Adrian Peterson. He is one of the best specialty running backs, short yardage situations in the game. Uh, as much as I love the New England Patriots and admire what Kevin Falk has done as a third down back, primarily, I would take Chester Taylor over pretty much any specialty back in the league. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts played a uh, division game today against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, first game since the end of the Tony Dungy era. Uh, they, they survived 14-12. Peyton Manning played a solid game. Uh, big news in that one, Anthony Gonzalez got hurt. And with Anthony Gonzalez out, potentially for a long time, and, and with Marvin Harrison moving on, and Reggie, Reggie Wayne is only the health, is the only healthy uh, playmaker they have right now. Are they going to be? Do you think they're even going to win the uh, the AFC South? I mean, it could be a battle. That, that's a that was a great way to put it. They survive, They really did survive right. that matchup with the Jaguars. You couldn't. They, it couldn't have been any closer than it was really, as Jacksonville missed the two point conversion late in the game. Right. So, I mean, with the Colts. It's almost like they're kind, they're kind of unpredictable if you look at, the, you know, one year they think, you're like, oh, they're, they're going to be one of the best teams to make the playoffs. A lot of times they'll make the playoffs and then they'll just get, they'll get whooped in the first round of the playoffs. It's like what happened to the team. The loss of Anthony Gonzalez could be key as last year, even with Marvin Harrison, Anthony Gonzalez stepped up, showed he can be at least the number two back behind Reggie Wayne. 